What is good people? In this video, what we're gonna do is cover why calorie counting just doesn't work. But you saw the intro and one of the reasons why calorie counting just doesn't work for certain people is because usually the people that want to start calorie counting for the first time are people that want to lose weight and the problem is is that they usually see in a magazine or some sort of website they should start consuming say 1200 calories which is pretty low anyway so what they do is from the get-go they just start consuming such little calories by trying to track it the problem is is that that number is arbitrary that has nothing to do with you you've just decided to start using an app and trying to hit the calories which is probably much lower than what you currently eat so for that reason you start stressing it you start failing a lot because you just happen to not be able to fit in the food that you currently eat into that calorie number to the point you feel like you're starving and usually that's why you quit In other cases, there are some people that are just way too rigid when it comes to counting calories. Like they're damn near with every single meal they're having, removing grains of rice or little bits of pasta or veg or whatever it is on their plate, probably not veg, to try to make sure the food scale is exactly dead on. Like they're fighting to make sure it's 100 grams of rice or 150 grams of X, Y, Z. You don't need to be that rigid for the most part. Unless you're really someone that's competing and things like that. If you're just trying to lose weight, a couple grams here and there isn't really that big of a deal to be honest it's more a case of trying to overall improve your nutrition as a whole especially if you're at the beginning stage you don't have to be that rigid as you begin to lose pounds upon pounds upon pounds it becomes harder and harder so you'd be better to be more accurate but when you're in the beginning stages you just need to get to a point of eating better foods and making good substitutions of what you currently eat. Being way too rigid can really lead to you like having like eating disorders and complexes to the point that when you see food, you don't even see food, you see a number that you have to hit. You shouldn't be literally just taking, for example, a meal plan from some other website and following it to a T. You can maybe take one or two meals and mix them into your day, but you shouldn't, for example, 100% go from eating what you currently have into following some random diet that has nothing to do with you that may even contain foods that you don't necessarily like at all. All these things lead to failure. Now, in regards to what these people should do and why calorie counting can be a great tool, before you even get to that point of finding out how much calories you need to eat to lose weight, you should just start tracking what you currently have for two reasons. One, to find out how much calories you already eat, just so you know where to benchmark yourself. And two, it's a great way to learn portion sizes and learn about nutrition, it's simply because you'll soon realize that there's certain foods that you never expected has super high calories. Even the foods that are quote unquote, like the healthy type foods, for example, if you were to then check the calories of things such as the drinks that you consume, things like peanut butter, Foods like salmon, which are all great things you can have in your, your weekly or daily diet. But if you look at the calories, it's pretty, pretty high. Portion sizes really do matter, especially when it comes to certain foods. Like for example, give me, so I used to have like 250 to 300 grams of chicken breast. After getting kind of sick of that, I started having things like cod. Eventually, about a year ago, I started having salmon. I realized almost within three weeks that why is my weight starting to slowly creep up? Why am I not losing weight? And it was simply because I didn't really assess um, the amount of calories I was in salmon because the portion size I was having of it was too much. You need to realize that even healthy foods can have high calories. So when it comes to losing weight, it matters about the portion size and what food you're eating. Like another normal example would be one of my family members at one of our functions came up to me and said that they're looking to lose weight and I asked them okay then so what have you done so far and she basically just said that she's changed to being vegan and I like paused because I was waiting for her to say more stuff but that was it. She thought that if she cut out meat and just went to veganism that she'd just automatically lose weight and I was like I'm sorry that's not the case it comes down to the amount of calories you're eating. Just because you're not eating meat doesn't mean you're inherently going to lose weight because there's a lot of vegan options out there that can still like make you gain weight because high calories or just simply if you sat down and ate one of the healthiest foods there is like for example 5,000 calories of apples and broccoli you're still not going to lose weight because it's the total amount of calories that you consumed in a day you need to achieve a calorie deficit one of the key things when it comes to calorie counting is the fact that you don't technically have to count every single day most average people which is probably like what 90 percent of you that's probably watching this video you just want to potentially lose a bit of weight all you need to do now is get into the habit of realizing what foods that you eat on a regular basis has x amount of calories because for most people 
in a week, you probably only have about, what, six to 10 meals you probably interchange. For example, you may have like maybe four variations of breakfast that you typically have. All you have to do then is one, learn the calories which is in each of those meals. And the easy option would be to just save it in my fitness pal. For example, on screen, I'll take a little video screen recording and I'll show you some of the meals I have saved in my fitness pal. I have probably more about, hmm, probably about 20, but simply because I do YouTube and I do full day of eating videos. So when I make a new meal, I'll purposely just save it just in case I ever try it again. But for most normal people, you're probably gonna have around, you know, six to maybe up to 12 meals that you just intermingle. Once you have those foods already on my fitness pal, all you have to do is when you're going through the day, you literally just click, oh, I'm gonna have this meal, gonna have that meal, gonna have that meal. And it will then show you all the calories you're gonna have in that day because you're eating relatively similar. And in the scenario, you don't wanna go that route where you even save the meals, even though it is super, super easy. It just makes everything quicker. After you've trapped for maybe like two weeks in a row and you've kind of learned portion size, you can then decide to eyeball it when you're making meals and roughly know that you're in the ballpark. And then maybe only once or twice a week then track again just to make sure you haven't veered off the path too far to the point where you don't have to stress it as much you're not having to track every single gram but for those of you that are counting calories specifically for trying to lose weight as i said earlier on find out how much calories you currently consume so track around five to seven days using some sort of food tracker app and make sure to try and track consistently so include your drinks as well once you figure out that number for example say it's 2500 all you need to do then is just reduce the calories slightly by like two to 300 calories at most, and then gradually lose weight. You don't need to drop it by a thousand calories or find some random fitness plan that someone else made. You don't need to follow no one else's meal plan. You need to gradually improve your own, and that is the best way. When you drastically change your diet to someone else's that just made it randomly, that's not even catered for you, it becomes a lot more stress and a lot less likely you're gonna follow through with it. Because unfortunately, some people truly believe that they can go follow one of these random Love Island people's meal plan for four weeks, lose maybe 10 pounds because they've done some crazy crash diet, and then they believe they can go back to their old way of eating and not gain the weight, which is silly. They're obviously gonna gradually gain the weight back if they go back to how they ate previously, and then you become going in this cycle of fad diets, gain the weight back, lose the weight with crash diet, then gain it back. It becomes a vicious cycle that you just don't want to do. So in reality, what you need to do is improve upon what you currently do if you actually want to see progress and maintain it for the long haul. So you could also exercise as well, but this video I've purposely kind of focused it mainly on the calorie counting aspect. But in reality, the more you exercise, the more calories you can afford to eat because you're burning calories from exercising as well. Uh, if you want to do it simply through food, that's where you have to be a little bit more stricter. But it depends on how much weight you have to lose. If it's only like four or five pounds, it's not that bad. If you're, for example, 40, 50 pounds overweight, then over time it may be, it's going to take a while to lose that weight. So don't expect to do it in two, three weeks. But anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope it somewhat helped any of you that may be struggling or worrying about counting calories. Hopefully I broke it down very simple. Anyways, people, I will see you in the next video. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that video, people. Anyways, I thought I'd just check out, see what the physique's looking like on camera.